Hi dear guys and girls, welcome back again. Great to, uh, to have you tuned in again. Um, today I wanted to speak on uh, the narcissist who apologizes is still a narcissist. Now why bring the subject up? Um, oftentimes I've heard um, you know stories from, from you, uh, the victims. I know that I did it myself. Um, where we try and make excuses for bad behavior by saying, well, the narcissist apologized to me. They were truly sorry about what they had done. And um, maybe they're not so bad after all. Maybe I should give them the benefit of the doubt. So it's all these questions that keep coming up. And this is what I also receive oftentimes uh, when you write to me. So, you know, just to start from the beginning, making an apology, when you and I make an apology, it is a process of acknowledging where you have done wrong. It is uh, realizing that you hurt the other person. Um, it's feeling guilt. It's feeling empathy towards the other person for hurting them by something you have done or said. So this is the whole process. And the end of that process is when you value the person enough to fix things, to mend things, to offer that apology, to say, this is my responsibility for the breakdown in our relationship. I'm offering the apology because I value and I love you enough to fix this with you. I want to make things right. So that is the process of an apology. But when the narcissist goes about apologizing, it is a whole different ballgame. So I'm going to take you through a few points that I've again written down here for myself. Um, just to make you see what is in fact going on in the mind of the narcissist when they are apologizing to you. It is another way of having control over you, of playing these mind games with you. Because the narcissist is all about control. It is all about maintaining their false facade, their mask. Um, it is all about uh, putting on this face to the outside world um, and not, or at least trying to um, um, upkeep that mask, to not have it cracked. So, again, everything they say, everything they do, all the tactics they use, all the little games, all the little tricks they pull out of their bag of tricks is, um, is designed to keep you fooled, is designed to keep you believing in their false self. So, when apologizing, the narcissist is in fact repairing the cracked illusion of perfection instead of repairing the hurt that they have inflicted onto you. So what does that look like when you confront a narcissist about behavior, about what they've said, about what they've done? They will feel that the illusion of their perfection is being cracked. So they are not interested in how you are feeling. They're not interested that you have been hurt by this. They are also not interested in the fact that you, you know, that you have the audacity to bring this up. So the only thing that they are experiencing in their mind is that you have cracked their illusion of perfection. And instead of them wanting to make things right with you, they will only be stressing about, oh my goodness, my illusion, my mask of perfection has been cracked. How do I piece that back together again? How do I glue things up? So they know that it is natural, normal uh, human behavior to apologize when you hurt someone else. Only a healthy person um, does that because they empathize, because they have the ability to empathize with the person that they have hurt. A narcissist does not have that ability. So they know the, the, that what a normal healthy person would do would be go in and would be would be apologizing. So this is of course what they do. They apologize because that is scoring uh, brownie points with you. 
Um, so when you verbalize that you have been hurt, instead of an apology, they tend to overcompensate. Now you might see this um, if we're talking about a, a um, narcissistic parent, they will overcompensate by, um, for example, if it is their child, they have uh, verbally attacked their child on, you know, over something frivolous. And um, then they will realize that, oh boy, in order to maintain um, this, this uh, false sense of self, in order to, to mend the relationship with my child, I will overcompensate by buying them lavish, lavish gifts or by treating them to something uh, good by way of food or drinks or you know that that sort of thing so they will overcompensate a lot and it will be to the point of where you thinking to yourself just get over it you know it, it is so obvious when they overcompensate so um it's you know it, it's like um what i mentioned in a, in a previous video where my um my mother-in-law um the narcissist uh, overcompensated when she realized that she had done wrong she would overcompensate with bestowing cash money on us um, so this is what the the narcissist will go about doing when you have verbalized that you have been hurt um, you know that the the apologies of or the apology of a narcissist because it doesn't happen very often of course so I don't think you can really speak of apologies it's, it's uh, that, you know, once in a blue moon, you'll get an apology. Um, in most cases, of course, there are exceptions to the rule. Um, their apologies are self-justifications. So they will never come out and show their hurt and say, I'm sorry, I'm truly sorry that I offended you, that I hurt your feelings. Um, they will go about it in a different way. So they will say, well, um, I did that because, and um, they, they'll bring up some sub story why they went about hurting you. They will never get to the root of the problem. They will never apologize um, by acknowledging their wrongdoing. So they will go about it in a roundabout way, which just has you questioning you know, what are you talking about? Because they will, they will launch into this huge story they will put onto you. And you will just be, um, you know, you, you, you would just be, you'd be thrown off balance. I was at a loss for words there. You'll be thrown off balance because it's all about them uh, justifying their behavior, justifying who they are. So, whereas in most cases, I feel they realize what they're doing. Uh, they will never admit to that because that means stepping down from their pedestal and they are very fearful of doing that. So they will go about justifying their bad behavior. Um, another thing that is also attached to the self-justification is uh, deflecting blame. So they might say, this, this is what an apology sounds like to them or this is how they will go about doing it. They'll say, yes, I did this or that. Um, but you made me do it, or if you hadn't done such and such, I wouldn't have had to respond in such a um, um, belittling fashion, for example. So this is the deflecting. Whatever they are, have been accused of, rightly accused by you of saying or doing, um, they will deflect this and say, it's not me, it's you. That is, in fact, what it um, boils down to. So, uh, to just come back on, on um, you know, on overcompensating, this was, I think, a good example was also uh, with the narcissistic ex-friend that I've spoken of so many times that it even got to be boring. <laughs> um, but she, of course, as you all know, we went no contact. I uh, ended the friendship for a while. She was given the silent treatment for a couple of months. And... Um, about two or maybe three weeks before I remarried again, I wanted to have at my wedding because I thought she's my bestie. I, I, of course, I want to have at my wedding. So we had sort of started patching things up in May, April, May of last year, 
and in July of last year I got married again. So about a couple of weeks before I remarried, um, we had patched things up and um, we had spoken on things. Um, I had told her that I was um, that I had uh, relayed some of her bad behaviour to another friend and uh, my mother. I told her about this, and. Um, she, of course, uh, was very upset that I told others of her bad behavior. And she went about, instead of apologizing and saying, look, I'm sorry that, um, that you feel this way. I'm sorry that I've caused you all this hurt. Um, no, she took the focus off of that, off of her wrongdoing, and um, made a huge drama about the fact that I had actually told other friends and my mother about her bad behavior. So this, that's where it started and then she continued with more of the victim playing by uh, shedding crocodile tears, I mean huge tears, sobbing and uh, she said I'm so grateful that we've had a chance to speak on this and that our friendship has again been repaired and uh, I mean huge crocodile tears, I fell for it because I thought oh my goodness she is, she is showing remorse, she is sorry about what she has done. But of course, this was all part of this facade. There was nothing real about it. You know, I'm sure you can all relate to this way. The narcissist in your life has shed huge crocodile tears. And when you think back on it, when you're out of the relationship, you realize just how fake it all was. So anyway, to speed things up a bit, a um, couple of weeks later, I, of course, got married. And uh, this uh, narcissistic ex-friend said to me, I don't have uh, any money at this moment to be able to buy your gift. So how about I film your wedding day and I take pictures? And I thought, oh, isn't that wonderful that she's offered to do that? Because I was getting married the second time, we didn't want to make a huge wedding. We just wanted it simple with a few family and friends. And so, of course, I didn't bother um, hiring a photographer. So I just thought, well, that's a great gift if she would film uh, our vows and take a few pictures, you know, that'll be great. So, um, but she just went overboard on this, on, on the, the stuff she was going to do for me and how she was going to put together this video and the certain music she was going to use. And this just, you know, it was overcompensation, which what would have been enough was if she had said, I am sorry for hurting you. You are my friend. You are my best friend. I'm sorry for hurting you. That would have been enough, you know, if it had come from a genuine place. But she went into overcompensation mode by just, just overdoing. And at some point I felt it that she was just trying her hardest to um, repair things by trying to show me, look at what a wonderful person I'm, I am. You have seen me in a wrong light. This is who I really am. And of course, again, um, in hindsight, I realized just how, how fake the uh, behavior all was. So that was just to give a small example. Well, not a small example. I elaborated maybe a bit too much on that. But anyway, you uh, get my just there. Um, another point is um, when a narcissist apologizes to you, they tend to go about um, explaining. So it's explaining their despicable behavior. Um, they would say things, they, they could say things like, I was in a bad place when I disrespected you, when I said ugly stuff to you. Um, I was having difficulties, personal difficulties, or I was experiencing stress at work, or I have a lot on my plate. I heard that so often from the sex friend. I have so much going on right now. So, you know, what it, what it all boiled down to, what she was saying is I have so much going on. So if I, if I um, interact with you in a non-loving way, then, you know, you should just be able to handle that because you've got to realize all the stress that I'm going through with work or with raising my child or whatever the case was. So they will go about explaining their behavior to them. This, it might sound like an apology to you, but what they're really doing is again, trying to keep their mask in place because a narcissist does not like the fact that they have to admit to wrongdoings because of course, it's starting to sound old, 
but they feel superior. They think they are better than anyone else. Um, so yeah, what, what does the explaining sound like? It could also be, I'm so sorry that you feel that way. You know, it's instead of saying something like, I'm sorry that I hurt you, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry that you feel that way. Um, that may be what I said and did, but you're making such a big deal out of it. It wasn't that bad. You're overreacting. Um, and one of my favorites, also again through this ex-friend, she often said to me, nothing human is alien to me. Now, isn't that the strangest thing to say? When you are telling the narcissist that you are hurting, that you do not like the way they treat you, isn't that a strange apology where they turn around and say to you, nothing human is alien to me. No human emotion is alien to me. It is, you know, it's, that is a very strange way to go about apologizing. So the narcissist who apologizes um, is still a narcissist. Don't fall into that trap of thinking while well, they apologize. So I'll give them a second uh, chance or a third chance, or in most cases, I'll give them chance number 80, you know, um, the narcissist does not apologize. They, they deflect, they uh, shift, um, try and shift your perception, your perception of feeling mistreated or feeling disrespected. They will do anything in their power to, to shift that, to make you look like the idiot, to make you look like the crazy person. And, um, this is of course, absolutely not true. Now, don't get me wrong, we all, you know, we all have faults. Every single one of us has, has faults. Uh, we all make mistakes. Only we are capable of um, correcting those mistakes and of apologizing and of having empathy towards someone whom you claim to love. Um, you know, you are in a place where you can mend things. And a, a, a narcissist will claim to love you, but just continue after their apology um, they will continue to break you down because why would a narcissist um, a resort to apologizing at some point it is usually when they realize that they are starting to lose their grip on you when you have questioned things um, you know in in over a period of time when the questions keep coming up when you keep confronting them on certain things, they will then realize that they are losing their grip, they are losing the control over you, and then they will resort to a sort of half, half-assed <laughs> apology. But um, is it an authentic apology, apology? Is it one where they are truly remorseful of their behavior? No, no, no. It is, uh, it'll never be that way. So, just be warned and um, don't fall for it. You might fall for it a couple of times, as I also have. Um, but at some point you will realize that the apology is not real. Because if, a, if an apology is real, um, the person making the apology will take steps to repair your hurt, um, to listen to you, to take time to listen to your side of things. Um, and, and just, you know, value you enough and love you enough to want to repair the broken pieces. Um, and in the case of a narcissist, of course, this uh, is not true. So that was it. Please share your stories on, you know, the, 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 um, the fake apologies you received. I, I realize there's, uh, there may be really funny ways of apologizing that you've experienced, um, and it just, you know, it does set you off balance, especially when you are romantically involved with a narcissist and they apologize. Of course, that is the only thing you want to, to hear because you want them back in your lives. You want to make your marriage work or your relationship work. So you will be very gullible um, when they put on the crocodile tears and uh, apologize. But of course, we all know that this is only temporary because an hour later, a day later, they will resort back to their destructive and despicable behavior. 
Thanks all again for tuning in and um, speak to you all very soon. Bye for now.